to be for. This meeting is about active solutions, and that's our theme tonight. This isn't me just coming up here and talking at you. We're going to find solutions. Does this sound okay? You're a little close. Okay. This is a collaborative working session here tonight. I'm going to explain some of the really important facts and statistics that you may or may not already know about. Some of you may be hearing about this for the first time. And whether or not you're hearing about it for the first time, it's going to be difficult. It always is. Um, if you do know a lot today, what I tell you hopefully will provide you with another layer of understanding. To really understand something, it has to come in layers, it has to be repeated, you know, it has to be driven home that way. So tonight, like I said, I need answers, I need ideas, and I need solutions from everybody in this room. And I want you all to make a connection. And this connection is going to be, how are we in this room, how are all of us connected to and contributing to slavery and human trafficking? And that's going to be the hard part. For some of you who don't know anything about this, it's going to be the hard part that you may not want to hear. So after we make these critical connections, now we're going to design the solutions. See where I'm going with this? The connection and the solutions, from that I'm looking for commitments. So what kind of commitments will you be able to make after this session? How committed are we to making this a free world for everybody? So Stephen Covey, you've all heard of him, very well known success guru, and he says always start with the end in mind. I don't know if you guys have studied him, but he's rich and I'm not. So we're going to do what Stephen <laughs> Covey says. And um, so pass around the sticky notes. Think about what I'm asking you to do. And some of the things you might come up with might be very simple. You might just tell your friends, have a little meeting. You might want to just pray about it. You might want to donate some money. There's all kinds of solutions out there. And no solution is too small or too big. So please start thinking about it. What I'm also going to ask you um, is to call upon your higher wisdom and your spiritual <coughs> sides. If you don't have one, a spiritual side, I'd, I'd like you to get one in the next 45 minutes or so because to me it's a very critically important part of what we're doing. We have to understand on a higher level how we're all connected and how important our connection and our commitment is to somebody all the way on the other side of the world. And Albert Einstein, somebody uh, came up with this quote, which I'm not really sure if it was from him, but I heard that he had a theory of ascension that was very um, mysterious and not well known by a lot of people. And his theory of ascension talked about the hall of ignorance, the hall of learning, and the hall of wisdom. So what I'd like us to do is enter into the Hall of Learning and pass into the Hall of Wisdom tonight. Because this is, this is a, an issue that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years and has affected billions of people. And right now tonight, in this room, we have to start working for a better solution. And now I'm gonna give you a quote that has gotten me into trouble <laughs> before. And Dan, you're here. Dan Margolis, he heard me say that. And yeah, there was a lot of fallout. And how does this work? It should just arrow forward. No? That's my quote. And I hope to see this on everybody's refrigerator on a magnet someday. <laughs> but awareness without action equals acceptance. And I know you guys all understand that. So. I don't know how I'm going to do this if this doesn't work. I can be your forwarder if you want to be. Is it actually on? The remote? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it will shut off. How do you turn it on? Maybe you put it in sleep mode. I hope nobody else is asleep. No. <laughs> you have put us in sleep mode, Robin. I don't know how to do this. I'll, I'll, hey, I'll do it by hand. You just give me the cue and I'll do it. Go ahead. So. <laughs> First thing I'm going to give you is some numbers, some really disturbing numbers, and you may or may not already know these numbers. 
but I'm giving you some reliable sources too. These aren't my numbers. The International Labor Organization and the Polaris Project. Remember those websites, write it down. Those are very, very good sources of information. Those are our major sources. I mean, pretty much anything you need to know is going to be on one of those websites. So here's the first number, 20.9 million. So can we all imagine what that number means? That's the number of people globally, that's the estimate of people that are caught in slavery right now. 20.9 million people. 26%, do we know what that means? Does anybody know what that means? That's how many of those 20.9 million people are children. So let's do the math. We have 21 million, about a quarter of them are slaves in some form. It's a lot of children that are caught in slavery. Do you see why we need help and we need to collaborate, we need to fix this? Next number. That's a lot of money, that's a big number. That's the estimated revenue that this industry yields every year to the people that are slave masters, pimps, traffickers, people brokers, soldier brokers, etc. That's the revenue. The only illegal business that makes more money than that is the illegal drug trade. This number is bigger than the estimate of the illegal weapons trade in this world. It's another very, very big number. Last one. This is the estimate of people right now, and it's a low estimate, in the U.S. People right now living in our own country, our own free world and free country, that are human trafficking victims right now. So, next slide. I'm going to give you a few types, one at a time. Labor trafficking, that's the biggest area of human trafficking, where most people lo uh, globally are trapped. 68% of the 20.9 million I told you about are in forced labor. They're working in mines, plantations, uh, domestic workers, brick making factories, cigarette rolling, you name it, all over the world. And like I said, 26% of them are children. And there are children that are making bricks and in mines and harvesting all over this world. Next, forced soldiers. It's an area that our government has been looking at for quite some time now. Children are forced to go into combat. They're forced to carry guns that are bigger than they are in many countries. And there are little girls that are forced to be in these camps as wives for the adult male soldiers, believe it or not. And that's a very, very big number. And the last one is sex trafficking, which we all know about. We're gonna talk more about all of these types Sex trafficking is the biggest human trafficking issue in our country. You know, people are disconnected from some of the labor trafficking and the forced soldier uh, information because they don't see it and we don't really live that. But that last one, that's right here, that's right in our faces now, today. So we're also gonna talk some more about that. So the next slide, oh, well this, <laughs> so, yeah. Something that, it, it's something we don't wanna hear about. I don't have a ton of information but this is going on now and it's getting more and more attention. I forgot I threw that in there actually, but it's there. So the next slide, we're gonna talk about the TIP report. This is a great report, it's created by the Department of State every year. It's very long, it's a very comprehensive report. What happens is in the TIP report is that agents investigate, they monitor, and they report on the status of modern day slavery all over the world and they put it into a report every year, and it's available publicly on the government website right there at that address. Um, they provide possible solutions, they provide education, but I have an issue with the TIP report. And my TIP report issue is, like I said earlier from my quote, many of the countries that are investigated have been found to exploit people through slavery. And in my humble opinion, <coughs> We are a country and a government that's hypocritical. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of follow-up for this, but 
This is where I came up with my idea for awareness without action is acceptance. Because our government is fully aware of the plight of so many laborers overseas. And oftentimes it's right here. Yet as a nation, we continue to allow these imports to flow in. And we fully realize when we're buying these products that they were made now under slave conditions. And people in this room might not realize it. You guys might be hearing this for the first time. But if you go to that website and you look on our government's report, they're telling us that this is what's occurring, yet it's still occurring. So this is the confusion that I have when we hear this report and we find out what's going on, yet nothing changes day after day. We as a country are participating in slavery because these imports are rolling in every day and we're going to the store and we're purchasing them. So when we say labor trafficking on that previous slide, is something that doesn't touch us. When you think about it, it really does. And we touch labor trafficking products every single day. And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more information about specifically what industries and what products, but the tip report, again, is something that you wanna take a look at that website and, and just learn more about it. So what the tip report does is it breaks up countries into tiers. Tier one is the highest rating, and it doesn't mean there's no exploitation and no slavery. It just means that it's the highest rating. The TVPA is the Trafficking and Victims Protection Act that came about quite a while ago, um, and they set the standards for whether a country should be tier one, two, or three. So tier one, again, is the highest rating, and when you go on the website for the TIP report, you'll, you'll understand more about what's happening. Tier two, is the government has not fully complied with the standards that were set out in the TVPA and they're not doing enough. Um, usually if they're tier two, they're doing something or they're improving. Next. The tier two watch list. Now this is a country that was tier two and has regressed and is now on the tier two watch list. Or it's a country that was in tier three, which you'll see in a moment, and they've improved, but not enough. So there's a tier, tier three. Um, this is just a brief summary that I created as a definition. But what's happening is our government is saying, these are the countries that participate in slavery. These are countries that we're importing and buying products from that are made by children or made by slaves. Next. So here's a little bit about the the act that I told you about. This is a very, very important piece of legislation. It became the cornerstone of all the additional federal and state legislation that has rolled out in the country in the past several years. Um, it's available on the same website as part of the TIP report. Again, I'd, I'd like you to take a look at that when you have time and, and educate yourselves. I'm giving you the resources. You guys really have to do the research and learn what you can about it. Um, next one. So a little bit about child soldiers and forced soldiers. This information is also available in the TIP report. These countries are under the highest suspicion of having the most child soldiers or forced soldiers, or as I mentioned earlier, little girls who are forced wives for the soldiers. And these are the top 10. And again, go there yourself, take a look at it, do some Google searches and draw your own conclusions. 